I did what I knew to do, and that was just, you know, streets. And then came the day where I got jumped in. My dad was a gang member, and he would always tell me stories about him and his brothers and then their jackets, like a, a king in his robe or a king in, in his crown. I eventually ended up taking over the gang in that process through my hatred and through my, my anger. I ended up taking over the gang and becoming the number one person. In that whole process, too, we came about with uh, some crazy news involved with the Mexican Mafia. We got a phone call saying that, hey, um, it's a setup that um, as soon as Ruben goes in with the stuff and hands it over, they're gonna kill him. That was the first time that I could say I was really scared because I knew that I had to go through with it. If I didn't, then my friends and a lot of people were gonna die. They were gonna be hurt. And if I did do it and this was true, then I was just gonna die. So I'm pretty much walking into my own death trap. So I end up, cops end up getting me and I end up going into jail. Man, like maybe this is, this was it. Like maybe, maybe that phone call that we got about a person being killed was just to, to get me not to do it. So a couple weeks later, I end up coming out. I remember going to get permission, like, hey, you know, this person that was saying this stuff, we gotta, we gotta kill them, you know, we gotta do this. This girl that I was dating at the time ended up inviting me to church. You know, I didn't wanna change my life, I just was thinking like, if I just come to church, then, you know, I'm doing my part and, and that's it. I would really pay attention to the messages, even though I really didn't understand them. Over time, within the six month period, um, I began to see things changing in my heart. Like, I'd heard people talking behind my back saying that, um, you know, maniacs getting soft. And in reality, that's, that's exactly what it was. Hearing God's word over that time, you know, it was beginning to soften this, this crazy hard heart. I would try to smoke weed to like clear my mind of all this and that, that didn't even work for me. I was like, I don't even want that no more. Like, I don't want to smoke, I don't want to drink. Like, what's going on with me? You know, people begin to talk like, you know, we're gonna kick him out. We're gonna, we're gonna bump him out of the way. We're gonna get Maniac out. Uh, but the way that things were progressing in the neighborhood and the wars that we were having, you know, it was gonna be more along the lines of them attempting to kill me. I began to go, call a couple people like, look, we gotta, I gotta take out a couple people. Um, are you down with me? My alibi in this whole thing was, I'm gonna go to church and it's gonna be done the day that I'm at church, the time during uh, while I'm at church. To top it off, I'm gonna even invite my little brother with me to church so that if I'm even questioned by the cops and all of this, that I got so many witnesses. And I remember just being into the message, you know, more than before. And, um, and it was crazy because while I was hearing that message, everything went like deaf, like I couldn't hear nothing. And then it went deaf for like a few seconds. And then I remember hearing God's voice saying, if you go through with this, you'll get them but then they're gonna kill Rudy, my brother, in the process. So like, I was like, I can't, I can't let my innocent brother get caught up in this. And I, that showed me that there was, it was never gonna end, you know? Cause even if, if they got him, then I was gonna have to go back and get them and then it was just gonna be a big old mess. And it, it wasn't gonna end. You know, if you wanna receive Jesus in your heart, raise your hand. But like when, when he counted to three, my hand just went up. <laughs> I was like, I didn't wanna raise it, but it just, it went up. I had no control over it. Like that was something I, I needed to do. And I, I was like, Wait, like how am I, what, why am I doing this? But like, I knew that I needed it. It was, when I did that, I felt all this pressure, all this stuff that I had been going through, all of that was coming up off me. I remember going to the front and praying with them to receive Jesus in my heart. And as soon as we finished the prayer, I looked to my right and my little brother's right there with me. He received Jesus too. You know, my little brother went on and he, he's a youth pastor now. And it's crazy that I had a plan that night, but God had a bigger plan. My friends, they didn't, or the gang members, they didn't like that. You know, they remember them saying that they were gonna kill me this and that. And I stood on this verse, you know, on this verse in the book of Hebrews, where it says, um, if God is for me, who could be against me? And nothing's happened to me to this day. And that was over 11 years ago. 
and nowadays, you know, I got a family. I got a wife. I got two kids. Um, you know, I serve in the children's ministry right here. I'm teaching kids. Can you believe I'm teaching kids the Bible? You know, and it's it's crazy. Never would I have thought that God was going to use me to teach kids. And, you know, back in the streets, I was teaching kids to do the wrong things. You know, I know God ain't finished with me yet. You know, I know He has a purpose for me. You know, because of all the things He saved me from. You know. He could, I could have I could have died a long time ago, but God had better plans for me. It's crazy to see what God is doing in my life and knowing that He's not even done yet. You know, barely even scratching the surface.